Hello folks, Jason Chrisman, JC's Bees, Central Ohio Beekeeper. In today's video what we're going to do is, uh, back in the early part of March, I ordered uh, five three pound packages and uh, um, I just recently picked them up. And that's what today's video is going to be about. It's going to be picking up the packages. Um, before we pick up the packages, I'm going to set up the boxes that the packages are going to go into. Um, it just so happens that the way I set the boxes up, um, the weather was predicted to be a little bit different than it was, and the whole situation changes with the boxes. It's a big hole to do. Uh, pretty long video. Um, I'm sorry if you're not into the longer videos, but hey, during this pandemic, what else are you going to do? You might as well sit down with a cup of coffee and watch some JC's Bees, and uh, he might as well go ahead and provide you with a nice long video to enjoy with your hot cup of coffee. So check this video out and see what you think. Okay folks, so a few days ago I gathered up five deep boxes for my five packages and I got them all set up with the, the beetle entrance that I'm going to play around with this year. And uh, this is kind of a copy off of the Tennessee Beekeeper um, with a few differences made to my entrances. For one, you can see I gave them an angled cut on the front. And the other thing I'm experimenting with that's a little bit different is I've drilled holes and put some screen in there in hopes that the robbing bees will come to the screen and not be able to find the entrance down here. So each one has, is a little bit different. This one's got three. This one's only got the one in which that's going to have to have more eventually, but to get them started that'll work. This colony down here has two, and that's just because it had an entrance up here in the lid and one down here. That down there is just a screen bottom base. We got one and three again. So just this morning, I brought up five more deeps, which I'm gonna go through and get my frame situated and the bottom deep and these deeps will eventually all be empty and placed on top of those and the reason for that is is tomorrow they're calling for rain and I'd like to get the packages installed so what I'll do is uh, open the packages and place them in the top of each box in an empty deep and let them come out on their own as the rain continues and I've also got uh, I believe it's a 200 gallon stock tank here it's got a bunch of rust holes in the bottom. I'm going to turn that into my hive stand for a few hives. And I need to figure out exactly where I'm going to put them. Before when I had bees up here, um, they started right back there by the fence and worked their way this direction. But those trees there kind of scare me. The wind does come from that way towards us. So I don't really want any trees to fall on them. So I'm thinking maybe more over this way and more up towards this wagon here in front of me than back that direction. So what I'm going to do later is I'm going to weed eat a small area. I'm going to get my hive stand set up and get everything placed where I want it and set up. I'm going to have, uh, well, let me just open one of these and show you here. Let's see, we'll do this one, maybe not be may not be a good one yeah this is a good one all of these frames and they're gonna be hard to see I ain't got my hive tool or anything to pry these apart and it's cold this morning so everything's super stuck together but uh, all of these frames are of capped food food stores from winter so what I need to do is I need to go through this box remove some of these frames probably the center ones and uh, I'll take these, probably, I don't know, three or four out of the center, and I'll replace them with just drawn comb. That way the queen has a place to lay. And I'll do that in each one of these boxes. So that's the game plan, folks. Um, what I've got over here is basically a lot of uh, drawn comb that I can use for the queen to start laying. Now, I get a lot of people ask me, this one's got, I got some frames that have a little bit of mold or mildew on them. How do I clean that up or is that safe for the bees? 
yeah i never clean those up i always let the bees handle it and it's never a problem you can kind of see the greenish tint there on the comb and this side doesn't really look that great but the bees will clean all that up probably wouldn't hurt to throw a little bit of extra wax on this part of the plastic just so it's drawn out but that's the game plan folks um, I'll catch you back up as I get more done okay I took a few minutes ran back home and got another stock tank uh, both of them have rusted bottoms not holding water so they're gonna make great hive stands I think um, I've went through this first colony or first box over here and I've got it set up pretty much about the way I want it um, let me give you an idea of what that might look like okay so in the center of the box this sides nothing but pollen this side's got a little bit of pollen and it's got a lot of empty cells this frame got a lot of pollen and a lot of empty cells this frame a lot of empty cells except for the food up there in the corner same with this side a lot of empty cells now you'll notice on this side there is some worker comb towards the center and then down here we got drone comb I don't mind that because I need to get queens mated so we'll keep that in here um, on the outside edges I've got frames that look like this um, at least four of these in each of my boxes is my plan so that's how they'll look and then on top since it's going to be raining tomorrow when I get my packages home we're going to add this second deep and in here is where I'll remove the can of syrup from the package the queen cage I'll set the queen cage down here and I'll just let the bees come out on their own and put the lid back on and then after the rain quits which see tomorrow's Sunday it's supposed to rain tomorrow into Monday so I think Tuesday I'll have the chance to remove this upper box and move the lid down here where it needs to be so I need to go through the rest of these yet but that's kind of my plan hello folks Jason Christman JC's bees just made a trip to Marysville Ohio which is about what was it an hour and a half trip from our house 60 some miles um, we're heading back now. I just picked up five three-pound packages of uh, Italian hybrids So we've got 15 pounds of bees in the back of the SUV um, We are supposed to be practicing the social distancing because of the pandemic though I brought me a, a mask which I did not wear and We're carrying some rubbing alcohol and paper towels to wipe off our hands whenever we have to get outside the vehicle so here before long we'll be back to the farm and I will be installing these packages and I'm pretty excited about that we uh, we just had one come up here and visit us in the front of the vehicle and we had to let it go out the window so we're one bee shy at this point just got back on 270 heading back towards our place okay folks so we made it back with the bees um, what I did was I took this curtain which you can see is uh, pretty translucent and I used it to cover up the packages to keep any uh, of the extra bees that cling to the package from flying around inside the vehicle and stinging anybody so what I'm gonna do now is get them all uncovered here and we're gonna unload them and then I'm going to come back up here in a couple minutes to the farm where we're at and uh, get these packages installed. Three pound packages, remember? There's one. Two. three four 
four. And five. This is what I mean. There's always a few extra bees that cling to the outside of the package. So here's what we got. And over there is where they'll be going. So we're going to run home now, or I am, and uh, get everything I need and come back up. Just wanted to do a little update here. I just took my chainsaw and cut off what was sticking out um, as far as the landing board here in front of my uh, my tubes. I had it on this hive and on that one right there. Um, it actually extended out to about here. Well, here's how much I cut off of this one. It would have stuck out about like that. And what I don't like about this sticking out like this is um, the hive beetle can pretty much land on this board and walk right into my tube. It's not going to work. Um, for these tubes to work, and what I'm thinking the way they're going to work is, is from what I'm hearing is hive beetles cannot hover. Um, that for means they're not going to be able to just stop and hover right here and then go in like a bee. So I had to get rid of these because that was just fighting against what I'm trying to do here. When you look, the board is right against the tube, so I had to go. And like I say, it was that way on this one and that one there, and I just trimmed it off with the chainsaw. So now what I'll do is get ready to install the packages. One other step I just made um, before I do install the packages, I drilled a hole in each end of these stock tanks. Did it on this end and on the other end of both of these. And that's going to be for a winch strap to hook in here, go up over the hives, and come back down and hook back to the tank. we got high winds coming tonight and to tomorrow with some storms. So I don't want these guys tumbling over. Um, you can see they've already got a height disadvantage against them. So it's going to be my part that keeps them safe. Okay, folks. I went ahead and installed the first one just to see how these packages were set up. Um, I've noticed in the past when I've got packages, each one's a little bit different. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I'm going to install these today. Um, I do want to note that that top deep box on each one of these will be getting removed after the package empties out and the bees push down into the bottom box. The top box is just allowing room for the package to lay in there as everybody comes out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the package. This is gonna bring us down to a metal SERP cam, which you can see here. And this is just to feed the package while they're in transit. So I'm gonna remove that now. This uh, shipping plastic that you see here goes down and attaches to the queen cage. So I wanna keep a hold of that as I pull this SERP cam up and out. Okay, here comes the SERP can. Still pretty full. I'm going to set it in here off to the side. Uh, it just so happens that the plastic that retains the queen does have a staple holding it in. I remove this from the staple and there's my cage queen. We're going to set that inside the hive just laying on top of the frames. set the package back down now what we need to do is we need to take the queen cage and the reason I set it down is because my hands are full now we're going to take the queen cage and we need to find which end of the cage has candy in it so we're going to take our finger real lightly 
just kind of get the bees to move out of the way we're looking for a big white spot it's not that end so we'll work our way down to the other end in which this is where the candy should be yes you see that big white spot that's fondant so that means the cork at this end is the cork we want to remove um, there's actually a cork at both ends but the other one the other cork will immediately release the queen and when I picked these packages up a little bit ago he said that they just shook these packages in not too long ago do not poke a hole in the candy Okay, here comes my cork. Part of it broke. Doesn't help any that every time I go to push it out, the bees cover it up. Okay, now the cork is out. So now I can lay this back in there. And now I want to gently shake, shake out the majority of the bees. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, sweep these excess bees off of this syrup of, can of syrup. And I'm going to rest the package right here while those bees work their way down in between the frames and then I'll lay the package down over there. Now I'll move on to the next one. And that's how I'm going to do each and every one of them folks, just like that. You can see there's not a whole lot of effort to it and it's been my observation that during this time the bees are relatively docile. Sure you don't want to squish one, but just take your time, do what you need to do, and usually Unless you squeeze one, they're pretty docile. Move the can of syrup. Remove the queen. Come back over here, maybe I can get better footage this time. We're going to use my hive tool. We're going to pop out the cork on the candy end. Just like that. You can see the candy down in there. Now by the time the bees eat their way through the candy and get to the queen, automatically they become family. Just like that. Move on to the next one. Try and get you a little closer here on this one so you can see how I go about this. So we're gonna use our hive tool, pop the four corner staples out, remove that. Um, the syrup can is a little bit recessed in, so I'm having to use the corner of my hive tool to elevate it enough that I can grab it. Like so, watch. Now if you look real closely, there is just a few little pinholes and that's how the bees are able to eat this. And this is what keeps them fed in transit, just like I said. Pretty neat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the queen cage over top of the box, shake it off. Now I'm able to get to the cork a lot easier without all those bees in my way. There's the cork. There's the candy. See here's a cork on this end too. But like I said what that does is it immediately lets the queen walk out. And since he just shook these bees in, they are not familiar with this queen. So that's why we need to let the candy uh, do its thing.
Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to go back around to the first one and try and get it so that the package is sitting down in there all the way so I'm able to put the lid on. And if we look down in here now, you can see a cluster of bees is pretty much push their way down in between the frames. So at this point, I can either continue to shake the bees out of here. Oh, they're just festooning on the package. See, I would rather get rid of the package if possible. starting to sprinkle that's putting a little bit of pressure on me so here's what I'm going to do I've laid the package on its side at the entrance over here um, I've actually used the clean cage which is right here to elevate it so that I'm not setting the package down on right on the bees and uh, we'll see how this works hopefully sometime tomorrow Monday There'll be a break in the rain and I'll be able to remove this package. But time will tell, we could go into Tuesday before I'm able to remove this package. So what I ended up doing, I didn't really like how the bees were clinging to the package inside of the top deep. So I ended up taking the time and shaking as many bees out as I could. And I've now got the packages, as you can see, sitting out and about with very, very few bees in them. Um, I, I could literally say there's no more than 50 bees in each package, but it took a lot of shaking back and forth and I know a lot of beekeepers uh, think that's cruel, but at the same time, got a lot of money wrapped up in these bees and uh, every one counts, so I didn't want to not get as many as I could. So they're all set up and as you can see it's starting to rain, so we finished that just in time. I'm going to pick up... Uh, Sorry about that. I'm gonna pick up those boards I cut off right here. Um, I've got all of my package uh, lids right here. I'm gonna take those with me. Could be handy for something beekeeping related later down the road. Um, as for the packages, I guess they're just gonna to have to set out in the weather in hopes that what few bees are left in them come out and join these colonies. Now, you're also gonna notice that I did remove the tubing so there wasn't no confusion. I gave them an open hole there, there, up here, removed the center one back there, and the same one with the other colony. Now tomorrow, when I come up, or Tuesday, because they're supposed to be raining tomorrow, um, I'll stick that red piece of tubing back in and they're just going to have to adjust to their entrance. But for now, I don't want any confusion on how to get in to where they smell the pheromones that they're drawn to, and uh, just seemed easiest to... Uh, remove that piece of red tubing. Now as far as my winch straps, you can see I've got one dangling back here. Let me explain something. My, my idea with running the winch straps over top of the hives and going back down and connecting to the other side of the tank did not work. The more I strap, the, uh, the more I winch uh, tighter on the strap, the more it wants to push the beehives together. So it's not really something I want is them right against each other. So I've got a 4x4 four four laying across. I've got a piece of limestone on that one that's probably 20 pounds. I'm going to try and find a rock for this one and a heavy rock for this one over here before uh, I leave the farm. I've got to go feed hay now, so that'll give me an opportunity to go rock hunting. So I just finished feeding hay and uh, I got to thinking, you know, I know which direction the wind comes from, so if I was to place a big object between the wind and my hives, I could probably stop a lot of the wind from even hitting the hives. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to back the old tractor or park the old tractor right behind the hives and uh, use it for a wind block. That's the goal, that's the way I'm going to go, I think. So right up here, um, is the parking area and off to the right is where I have the beehives. We'll just go ahead and park it there and uh, see what it looks like. See if it'll be a 
a nice wind block. I think it will. It's a pretty tall tractor. It's got an enclosed cab, so I think it'll work out rather nice. There's the hives. Put my spear down. I don't need my spear down that far. Put it down too much. There's a board laying out there with a nail in it. I know I shouldn't run that over, so I gotta get out and move that real quick. But uh, I'm gonna move it up here and we'll see what it looks like, and uh, we might just leave it here. We'll see. Okay, so I got it parked. Let's top out and see what it looks like. It looks like a beautiful wind block. I like it. It's been about uh, 30 minutes, maybe, since I set these up. Okay, so it's been about maybe an hour and a half since I installed the package. Um, currently, the sun's shining, so I thought I'd come back up here and just see what was going on with the activity. And we can see we've got orientation flights taking place. This is all normal behavior. This is your first time getting bees. Do not panic. This is just bees learning where home is. At this point, I could probably go ahead and stick them red tubes back in. And uh, what I may do um, is light the smoker back up. Maybe take a couple of these top boxes off, or all of them if I can, if the bees have moved down. That would greatly... Uh, drop my concern of them blowing over if they were only one box and that's really all they need to be at this point since we've got this little bit of a, a break in the weather and the sun's out I've removed the top box on them three I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm doing in this one here just so you have an example of what you could do if the weather would break when you're installing packages and you just want to get rid of that empty box on the top remove my cover But you can see lots of bees festooning there on this lid. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this back down. Knock the bees off of there. And we're going to reach in here and grab this uh, serp. Kind of smoke these ones down. Into the bottom deep. grab this can of syrup. You gotta be real careful where you grab without gloves. It's covered in bees. Shake it off, take it over here. The few bees that moved with the can will fly back over here. You can see we just got bees, they were festooned or clustered to the bottom of the cover so when I shook them they're now climbing back up the walls so I gotta push them back down in. Just give the box a good drop, and then I'll knock a lot of them down in there. And then keep smoking them so they keep going down instead of up. a few bees in there but they will work their way back up and then I'll shake what's still in there on top of the lid of this hive. What I need to do now though is make room for this queen cage to fit down in between the frames. So for more you need to do that, 
What I've had to do on the other ones is remove a frame. Personally, I'm not a big fan of these real wide queen cages because of this reason. You have to remove a frame. Um, I like the California style a little bit better. They're not quite as wide and they're easier to fit between the frames. do is I'm going to pull this frame which I had in the center which is just open comb ready to lay in and shake it off now I'm going to take the queen cage keeping a hold of this strap tightly drop it between the frames I want to turn it sideways so that it makes it easier for her pheromones to move around in the hive, as where if I turn it this way, it's going to be against the comb. So we want it sideways. Keep moving it around a little bit so the bees don't get squished on the sides. Don't move out of the way. Now it feels pretty secure. I'm also going to slide this frame over just a little bit and I'm going to leave it like that. About three or four days they should be through that fondant. I'll come back up, remove the cage, push this frame over and drop this frame back in. For now what I need to do is get the lid back on. Smoke them all down in. They will fit. this frame or drop this frame on this box so all these bees fall off and know where to go. And I'll store this frame up here in the shed for a couple days until I need it. So that's pretty much how I've did each and every one of these boxes. I got one more to go as you can see. So I'm going to hop on it now and get it taken care of. So what'd you think? Didn't fall asleep, did you? I didn't bore you to death, did I? So yeah, those are three pound packages. They're uh, Italian hybrid genetics, so I'm pretty excited about that. That's a whole new thing for my bee yards and uh, for me to play with. So I'm pretty excited about that. Just to give you an idea, a three pound package is gonna be about 10,000 bees per package. So we were looking at about 50,000 bees there. Um, it just so happened to be also that when I bought these packages, they were I believe they were marked at 125 a piece and if you bought more than five you could have a ten dollar discount per package so let me see my figures here i'm at a 625 dollar value and because i bought five and got the ten dollars off per package i was out the door for 575 so i saved 50 bucks so that's 50 bucks i can put towards foundation or i guess just put towards the fuel going to get there although fuel was relatively cheap now so I probably didn't have to spend quite 50 bucks to get there so I guess I probably did save some money and uh, I'm anxious to see what these bees can do this year um, I was kind of hoping to finish this video off with checking in on them and seeing if the queen had escaped the cage but I tell you since I installed them that day the weather has turned the other direction it might look sunny and shiny and beautiful here but 
it's in the low 40s and the winds are blowing it's relatively chilly um, and it's been that way all week most days it's just been gray so we did have the luxury today of having the beautiful sunshine which is encouraging and good to see so what I'll do is in the next few weeks is I'll release an update on the packages and how they're doing and you know they're probably going to be something you're going to be seeing a lot of this year if if uh, my plans go as I want um, I plan to split each one of these packages and a few weeks after they get some brood laid out so I'll take five packages and turn them into five hives and probably within like a month and a half two months worth of time of having them so pretty excited about that quick gain so hey if you enjoyed this video throw me a big thumbs up um, that'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find if you haven't subscribed please do so and make sure you click on that little bell so you can get notified when I release new videos I'd also like to throw out there that if you really enjoy my videos and my content and you would like to throw me some support that can be done over on my patreon page which will be linked at the end of this video and is down in the video description thanks for watching jc's bees and we'll see you next week folks Thank <laughs> you.